Hi, my name's Julie McCrossan, and in 2013, I was treated for stage four oropharyngeal cancer in my tonsils, tongue and throat. And I was treated with 33 sessions of radiation therapy and weekly chemotherapy. And later that year, I was invited by Associate Professor Sandra Turner, a radiation oncologist, to become an ambassador for the Targeting Cancer Campaign to help raise awareness about the benefits of modern targeted radiation therapy in relation to the treatment of cancer. And basically, I said, yes, I would if she did something for me. I wanted Sandra to help me raise awareness about the immobilisation mask uh, that is used for head and neck cancer patients when they get radiation therapy. And most importantly, I wanted her help to promote the news that we needed to improve patient and family education before the first treatment session with the mask, because the mask for me was the biggest challenge during my treatment. And we both shook hands and agreed. And this was the start of a patient-doctor partnership to improve healthcare. For our first project, and there were many to follow, Sandra interviewed me about my treatment and recovery in the bunker where I was being treated. And I think you've been seeing pictures of this while I've been speaking to you. And we also filmed the making of the immobilisation mask, which was a big thing for me because obviously I was having it done a second time. And we made a series of six very short videos presenting the information which I wish I'd seen before the first treatment that I had. And we posted these six videos on the Targeting Cancer website run by the relevant specialist college. And these videos have now been viewed over 38,000 times and the highest number of views by far have been for the Making the Immobilisation Mask video, which has been viewed over 22,000 times. So what's the value of our partnership? For me as a patient, I was able to communicate the information to patients and families on a website by the College of Specialist Doctors, the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists, Faculty of Radiation Oncology, and this gave the information I was presenting credibility. And from Sandra as a doctor, I was able as a patient who was alive only because of radiation therapy to communicate about the healing power of radiation and it was given credibility by the fact that I, of course, had received it myself. So on another occasion, Sandra invited me to join a panel discussion at an engineering and physical sciences in medicine conference in Sydney. And I told my story about the mask and the need for better education. Now, in the audience that day was a medical physicist, Professor Paul Keel, the director of the ACRF ImageX Institute at the University of Sydney. And Paul Keel did what you always hope as a patient. He really, really listened. And he spoke to me after the panel and he went on to build a multidisciplinary team, including leaders in psycho-oncology research, Professor Phyllis Buto and Associate Professor Harriana Dillon. And they all took action together. And here's a video to tell you what happened next. What it involves is you go into a great big room, you lie down on a flat bed, a hard bed, and you're clicked down firmly by the head. And its purpose is to hold you utterly rigid so the radiation beam can go through and hit the cancer without hitting your spinal cord or your brain. So it's a perfectly appropriate thing, but it's a really hard thing to handle. And it was definitely the hardest experience of my life. One in two patients will experience clinically significant anxiety while they're wearing their mask. 25 to 30 minutes that you're strapped up and you can't move. It was horrendous. It, it, it was dreadful. I immediately panicked. I felt my heart rate go force 10. I went red in the face and water, sweat started pouring off me. It's a, a truly horrific thing. I can't tell you how, how shocking it was when it happened. I can laugh about it now, but I wasn't laughing back then. When you do talk to people who've been through this experience, uh, a lot of them talk about how unpleasant um, an experience it was. I've literally met 
scores of people who've used the mask. And it's really important to say, not everybody finds it as hard as I did, but a significant minority do. And that's why we need research to find an alternative. Stories like these have inspired us to begin a world first project. I'm Professor Paul Keel, Director of the ACRF ImageX Institute. We improve how we can image and target cancer. What we are trying to do is to simply take away this mask and manage the motion that might occur in a different way. What we try to do now is to integrate all our previous knowledge into this one system. My role is to develop the technology of this project. And as a technologist, nothing satisfies me more than building solutions that can directly improve cancer treatment and even patient experience. No one else is as well positioned to remove the mask as we are. We can identify the precise position of a tumour inside the patient and we can lock onto this target with the radiation beam. The final piece of the puzzle is to add surface imaging. Our discoveries have helped breast cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer and prostate cancer patients. With your help, we'll be on the path to helping head and neck cancer patients too. I want to urge you to make a donation so we can find an alternative to the mask. If you can donate $5, that's great. If you can donate $1,000, that's better. And if you've got friends you can share this video with and get $50,000, that would be even better. I spent 30 days, day after day, restrained by the head for 20 minutes under that mask. And it was the toughest experience of my life. The ImageX Institute have got the expertise and the track record to remove the mask and create a series of sensors and software that will keep a radiation therapy patient safe while the cancer is taken out of the throat and head and neck area. Please donate to this really worthwhile cause. Remove the mask. 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 My goal in these doctor-patient partnerships is to use my media skills to promote innovation and good work on social media. So I want to share with you another segment. And this is a, another little bit of an interview with Professor Paul Keel, filmed in 2020 with support from ENT surgeon, Professor Richard Gallagher, and radiation oncologist, Associate Professor Dion Forstner, and they're both from St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. And we're talking about the ever-present need to get more funding for the Remove the Mask project. All research takes money, and as I understand it, you have received some funding for Remove the Mask, at least to begin it, from Cancer Australia. Can you explain what is Cancer Australia and what money have you received? What are you expected to do with those funds? Sure. So actually our first initial funding came from a crowdfunding campaign and the, the level of engagement we've had from patients and clinicians has been really heartwarming and encouraging that people see this as a real problem. And we, did, we have got funding from uh, Cancer Australia who provide uh, funding but also advice for cancer patients across, across Australia. And they've funded the Remove the Mask project for three years to allow us to really combine these three technologies of monitoring the patient's surface, combining the surface imaging with, with x-rays so we can sort of see inside the patient, and then adjusting the radiation beam. And these are all very complex technologies. And we also need to not do these solutions in isolation. We need to do solutions that are acceptable for the patients and also acceptable to the doctors as well. So it's very much a lot of things coming together and working on this common problem to remove the safety mask. That interview with Professor Paul Keel about the Remove the Mask project and also managing distress, uh, which also includes in the discussion, Professor Phyllis Buto from the School of Psychology at the University of Sydney, that's been viewed on YouTube nearly 800 times. My time is up. But I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to share my thoughts about the powerful and practical benefit 
of patient and doctor partnerships to improve healthcare. And I want you to watch out for the crowdfunding campaign in 2022 that will be raising more money for the Remove the Mask project. Thank you very much. Thank you.